Vasopressor use in critical care. In critical care settings, vasopressors play a vital role in managing patient hemodynamics. These powerful medications are the cornerstone of treatment for hypotension, a condition that can rapidly lead to organ failure if not addressed promptly. For medical professionals working in intensive care units, a thorough understanding of vasopressor use is important for ensuring patient safety and improving outcomes. Vasopressors and hypotension. Vasopressors are a class of medications that act by inducing vasoconstriction, effectively raising blood pressure. Their primary use is in the treatment of hypotension, a dangerous condition characterized by low arterial blood pressure and inadequate organ perfusion. Left untreated, hypotension can result in severe organ damage or even death. Vasopressors work to counteract this by increasing vascular tone and improving blood flow to vital organs. Blood pressure targets. When initiating vasopressor therapy, it's crucial to establish appropriate blood pressure targets. While systolic blood pressure is important, the focus should be on mean arterial pressure, MAP, and diastolic blood pressure. MAP represents the average pressure in the arteries during one cardiac cycle and is a more reliable indicator of organ perfusion. Diastolic blood pressure, representing the pressure when the heart is at rest, is particularly important for coronary perfusion. By targeting these parameters, clinicians can ensure more effective organ perfusion and better patient outcomes. Individualized pressure targets. While a map of 65 millimeters of mercury is often considered a standard target, it's essential to recognize that optimal blood pressure can vary significantly between patients. Factors such as chronic hypertension or signs of persistent hypoperfusion may necessitate higher MAP targets. It's crucial to regularly reassess these targets, ideally every four to six hours, to ensure the patient is receiving the appropriate level of vasopressor support without unnecessary exposure to high doses. Fluid dynamics. One of the less intuitive aspects of vasopressor therapy is its impact on fluid dynamics. Through their vasoconstrictive effects, vasopressors can increase venous return and, consequently, cardiac output. This mechanism mimics the hemodynamic effects of a fluid bolus, potentially reducing the need for excessive fluid administration. Understanding this concept can help clinicians balance vasopressor use with fluid management more effectively. Reassess fluid status and cardiac output. After initiating vasopressor therapy, it's crucial to continually reassess the patient's fluid status and cardiac output. High doses of vasopressors can impact cardiac function due to increased afterload or reduced myocardial perfusion. Regular monitoring allows for timely adjustments to both fluid management and vasopressor dosing, ensuring optimal hemodynamic support while minimizing potential adverse effects. Second line agents. While norepinephrine is generally recommended as the first line vasopressor for distributive shock, there are situations where adding a second agent with a different mechanism of action can be beneficial. For instance, low-dose vasopressin may be considered in patients with vasodilatory shock. This approach can potentially decrease the risk of complications such as atrial fibrillation and may improve renal function in certain patient populations. Angiotensin II Angiotensin II gyapresa a relatively recent addition to the vasopressor armamentarium has shown promise in specific patient populations. It may be particularly beneficial in patients with angiotensin II deficiency, often manifested as hyperinemia. Additionally, patients with septic acute kidney injury, which is often associated with decreased angiotensin II levels, might experience improved outcomes with angiotensin II therapy. Hydrocortisone in severe cases. For patients requiring high doses of vasopressors, such as norepinephrine equivalent above 0.25 micrograms per kilogram per minute, and experiencing multiple organ failures, 
the addition of hydrocortisone with fludrocortisone may be beneficial. While the impact on overall mortality remains unclear, studies suggest that this combination can help reduce vasopressor requirements, potentially minimizing the risk of vasopressor-related complications. Enteral nutrition. Recent evidence has challenged the traditional view that enteral nutrition should be avoided in patients receiving vasopressors. While higher doses of vasopressors do increase the risk of mesenteric ischemia with enteral feeding, the overall risk remains low for most patients. However, in cases of very high vasopressor requirements or in patients receiving dobutamine, it may be prudent to delay enteral nutrition initiation. Peripheral administration. Advancements in vasopressor administration have shown that these medications can be safely given through a well-functioning peripheral catheter. This finding is particularly important in emergency situations, where the need for immediate vasopressor therapy should not be delayed by attempts to establish central venous access. However, proper monitoring and care of the peripheral site remain crucial to prevent complications. Take-home message. Mastering the use of vasopressors in critical care is an ongoing process that requires continuous learning and adaptation. Each patient presents unique challenges, and a one-size-fits-all approach is rarely effective. By maintaining a nuanced understanding of vasopressor pharmacology, staying updated on the latest research, and continuously evaluating patient responses, clinicians can navigate the complexities of vasopressor therapy with confidence, ultimately ensuring the best possible outcomes for their patients. Question number one. What is the recommended mean arterial pressure, MAP, target for most patients requiring vasopressor therapy? The correct answer is B. The recommended mean arterial pressure, MAP, target for most patients requiring vasopressor therapy is 65 millimeters of mercury. Question number two. Which of the following is considered the first-line vasopressor in distributive shock, such as septic shock? The correct answer is C. Norepinephrine or levofed is considered the first-line vasopressor in distributive shock, such as septic shock. Question number three. In patients requiring high doses of vasopressors, what adjunctive therapy may help reduce vasopressor requirements? The correct answer is B. In patients requiring high doses of vasopressors, corticosteroid, such as hydrocortisone, may help reduce vasopressor requirements. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.